I'm joined by Chris Ridd, CEO of Events Air, since late July. Uh, exciting times for Events Air. Uh, why don't you just give us a little bit of a background, Chris, about your business experience before joining the team? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've spent 32 years in technology. So I grew up in sort of large North American companies uh, for most of that career. I spent 15 years at Microsoft in a range of different roles, eventually in exec roles. I then escaped the whole corporate uh, scene and I uh, was really enticed to do a startup, so I began in 2010 with a company called Xero, accounting software, which I think in the UK, when I t tell this story in the US, no one's heard of it. But uh, so I, I built that from pretty much from six staff up to about 320, uh, about a million dollars of revenue to about 130 million over five years. Um, finished that, it was an amazing experience, like grew rapidly, and then since then, after I sort of finished that, I was pretty exhausted, took a little bit of time out. So since then, I've been in really in a portfolio uh, sort of arrangement where I've had different tech startups that I've invested in, uh, advised um, on various boards. So I've pretty much done that for the last six years. So this is now my entry back into, you know, a proper operational CEO role, which is a great change. So I'm really enjoying it. Glad to hear it. Now, let's steer the conversation towards a more events industry led narrative. Uh, obviously, the pandemic gave rise to a whole new world of virtual events and a whole ecosystem supporting that. Uh, but how do you think, in your experience, then, has the landscape changed since we have emerged from the pandemic? Yeah, look, I think a, a couple of themes there. So we saw a lot of investment come into the tech scene around events uh, with COVID. And the real focus there was on virtual. And so you know, rapid expansion in terms of virtual events. And, and that was needed to for the industry really to survive uh, because events needed to go on. Since then, I think what we're seeing is um, virtual and hybrid uh, is difficult with in-person sort of coming back. A lot of event planners and professional conference organisers, etc., cetera, uh, have said that, you know, it feels like running two events. And so that what that means is that the in-person event and the hybrid or virtual components um, have felt like running two separate events. And what we need to do as tech, you know, as a tech company is to really make that easy, which is what our focus is and what we've done. So I think, um, I think emerging back from that, in-person certainly coming back, but our view is that we think events have changed forever. Like it's no longer gonna be, hey, we've got this in-person and we want to plug in this virtual or this remote capability as well. It should just be how you, how you run events. So that's been a big focus of ours in the product, being able to very easily be able to do both in-person and virtual and, and just run it as an event. That's just, that's just how we see events being run. So that's been a big focus for us. So what do organisers or your buying audience expect from a technology partner like you guys then? And how are those needs evolving? Because I guess at one point it was quite transactional. Yeah. I need A or B, yeah. but you have to be a bit more than that, don't you? I think so. Look, I mean, again, my background has been running software as a service tech companies. And the typical model is here is a product license. We use it, switch it on and, and, and that's how it happens. Um, I didn't mention part of my getting involved with Events Air was looking at it uh, when Events Air took some decent private equity investments. So we've now got some really good capital behind us. I was part of the team looking at that. One of the things that really struck me about Events Air is very different from say some of the newcomers into this space, which were very much focused on just technology. So we've been around 30 years. So what that means is that we understand the industry, we've built a whole raft of services to support customers that want to run events. Because this is not just a flick the switch and the technology does the work. You actually need to have much more of a holistic approach. And that's where we come in. So a big part of our team and investment has been providing that capability. So when I think about what customers want, they want that expertise. And that's one of the things that we're excited about is we've got all that heritage over 30 years. We've got an incredibly deep, rich platform that can do pretty much anything that you want as an event, where we've got the credibility to back it up with all of the services that, are, um, that a customer is going to want to have a successful event. And that's, that's our focus. Now, <clears throat> at the height of the pandemic, if memory serves, there was somewhere in the region about 815, 820 different event technology. Let's call them just virtual event platforms, yeah. you know, a range of comprehensive solution and yeah. basic transactional. Uh, and it became an incredibly busy marketplace very, very quickly. Yeah. And there was a lot of poor solutions on the market. It really did dilute things down and it made 
good products much, much harder to sort of find and identify. And what we ended up with was a whole raft of very confusing and very inconsistent pricing structures, absolutely no parity one, one company to the next. And a lot of organizers, their biggest complaint was they didn't know where to start. They were new in large uh, cases to, to buying this, to being involved with it. Uh, so how was sort of events there uh, try to get on top of that? How have you made that buying process smooth and user-friendly? Yeah. Look, I mean, coming back to your point, you're right. I mean, there was a lot of investment coming in. That was a point I made earlier. And I think as in-persons come back, a lot of them have been caught out. We're going to see a lot of consolidation in this space. There's no doubt. Um, our approach has been, again, the 30 years heritage that we've got, being able to come in. If you have a look at our customer base, uh, and we've, we've flown under the radar for a number of years. Like we haven't been out there, you know, doing a lot of marketing, et cetera. But you ask any serious event planner that's using our technology, we deliver. You know, we've got an incredibly comprehensive platform. And again, you know, when I got involved doing the due diligence and we did a lot of investigation into events there and how they were, how they built the product, it has evolved over a number of years. So we appeal to serious event planners that really understand this space. I think that's the difference is that, you know, that heritage that we've got, uh, the ability to be able to provide the services to have successful events. And yeah, like, I mean, there's been a lot of high profile cust uh, companies in the tech space that have been laying off staff. We're going to see more and more consolidation. And the thing that we feel confident about, we are a profitable company that's growing and we're investing, uh, continue to invest in product and people to deliver. So that's, that's what our focus is. So go into a bit more detail about the pricing structures then. Yeah, sure. I think the industry has become accustomed to a pricing model that says and a lot of our competitors will price by event and also the number of registrations. And we think that's not in principle. We're kind of against that because what we want to do, we don't want to penalise our customers for having successful events. So just because you've got more people who are running more events, you shouldn't have to pay more. So we've got a really predictable and consistent model, which is you pay one price, and you can run as many events as, as you like. So it's a it's a subscription model. Um, we have, of course, a whole lot of other services that you can you can also add on to that to, to ensure that you're running a successful event. But fundamentally, it's unlimited events, one price. So it's that real predictability, which we find our customers really like that because, you know, it means that they can run as many events as they want and they're not going to get penalised. So go on then. Tell me what's new at events there. What, what's coming down the line? What can we look forward to? Yes. Yeah, so look, we've just released a uh, latest version. There's been a lot of, you know, because it's such a, a big product, been, been a lot of things that we've been focusing on. We come back to the remote and virtual component. So we've just released uh, another sort of flavor of that, if you like, which allows remote attendees to come in with a much more immersive experience around content. So if you think about when you use, say, a Netflix or um, you know a YouTube where you've got tiles with content and we've got social media, this feeds, et cetera, et cetera. So, what we're trying to do is say to event planners and our customers that are running virtual events, it's really simple to be able to switch this on and have a great immersive experience. The other component to that is, um, and we've had this for a little while, but it's really starting to get traction. I talk about making it easy to do virtual. So one of the things that is becoming very popular with our customers is the ability to take um, cameras or PTZ cameras, which we can run remotely. So the beauty of that is that if you're running an in-person event and you want to record or if you want to live stream sessions, etc., but you don't want the huge AV costs, so we can actually switch those on at a fraction of what you would pay for an AV company to do that. We still work with AV companies, but it's a great alternative. We can run all that remotely through our production. We've got a whole studio, um, and we were showcasing this at IMAX, actually. We had people working around the clock, and we were able to run this sort of virtual session at a flick of a switch. Very easy, very cost-effective. So that's a big focus for us. So again, coming back to my, my view, our vision is you're going to run an event, you have attendees, whether they be in person or remote. We just want to make it super easy, and we might want to make it cost-effective. So lastly then, really, there's no sort of war between those who prefer virtual and those who prefer in-person. The landscape's changed and whichever way you go, you need solid technology support to deliver the best to your delegates, don't you? Absolutely, yeah.